right. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It is uh, truly a blessing to be able to gather together and worship with all of you. And we thank you so much for coming on this Sunday morning to join us at Bay Area Chinese Bible Church for our Sunday morning service here. Um, yesterday, we had our trunk or treat, and it was a really, it was a really good uh, event. It was really great to um, just be able to serve with so many people from the church and the school community and to uh, see new faces as well as to reconnect with those that uh, we have known before. Um, so uh, I have to admit, I'm a little bit tired from that, um, but still, it is a blessing to be here with all of you. Um, for those of you who may be joining us for the first time, uh, we'd like to invite you to uh, scan that QR code down there in the bottom left-hand corner, and that'll take you to our online communication form. Uh, we invite you to fill that out, tell us a little bit more about you, um, what led you here, and how we can serve you and be a blessing to you. Um, and even for all you longtime uh, attendees, uh, we invite you to take advantage of that form as well, because we'd love to hear from you and know how uh, we can support you, um, how you've been blessed, or any prayer requests that we can pray for you on. So uh, we have some announcements for some upcoming events. Um, so first of all, uh, Pastor Johnny and Louisa's retirement celebration will be taking place today from 12.45 to 2 o'clock. Um, uh, if you did get tickets for the event, for the, uh, the, the, the lunch, um, we do ask that you have them ready and, and out uh, when you show up. Uh, make sure you bring those to the reception um, to ensure that uh, you are accounted for and that you will get your food. Um, but even if you don't have the tickets, um, you're still welcome to join the celebration portion. Uh, unfortunately, the, the food part is limited, but of course the celebration part is open to everyone. And um, this will be a great time to show appreciation to Pastor Johnny and his many years of service, oh, and, and to Louisa for her years of service as well as um, pastor's wife. So, um, yeah, we are looking forward to that, of uh, just thanking him for that. Um, coming up in November is our Thanksgiving service, and so we have a special program lined up for that. Uh, it will be a combined service taking place at 1030, and the, uh, we'll be using both MC1 and MC2. So MC1 will be um, where the uh, service is taking place, MC2 will be an overflow. Um, and so just want to let you all know about that so that uh, you are aware of that change in our normal way of worshiping here. Uh, afterwards, we're going to be having a Thanksgiving fellowship lunch, and uh, we would like you to RSVP for that so we know how many people are coming and that we can have enough food there. Um, so if you can, uh, would like to attend, if you're planning on attending, um, scan that QR code that's there in the corner and fill out the form there to uh, let us know that you'll be joining for that portion of the event. Um, we have our family dedication coming up in late November. Um, this is a, always a, a blessed time where we can uh, meet families who have new members as well as to show our support and prayer for them. So if you're interested in participating in that, please register by emailing at nursery at bacbc.org, um, and please do so by November 12th. And then uh, we are going to be having our annual Operation Christmas Child Drive. So that will be beginning soon. Um, you can pick up the free boxes in the MC lobby beginning next week. And um, we'll be collecting them there at, on the dates that are indicated there. Um, this is always a, 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 a huge event for us. Um, it's a chance for us to um, show support and be a blessing to those uh, in you know, beyond our borders, beyond the walls of this, this church. And, um, you know, we trust that God is being glorified through those individual boxes there. 
Just as a reminder, next week uh, is Daylight Savings, and this is the one that, like I says, everyone likes, because we are turning our clocks back, so we get an extra hour. So just be aware of that. Uh, I know I have been looking forward to it very much, and so um, that's definitely something that I am going to be uh, anticipating. All right, so now we come to the part of our service for our tithes and offering. I'm going to ask the worship team to come on up. Um, and so this is our time where uh, we will worship the Lord through this part of our service here. Um, you can scan the QR code to contribute through PushPay, or if you'd rather um, give a, a physical donation, we have our uh, tithe and offering box there in the back. So if you would please join me in prayer, um, I'm going to ask the Lord's blessing for not only our uh, offering, but also for the rest of our service here. Let's pray. Dear Father, I thank you for all that you have given to us, all that uh, you have provided and just how our church has grown from the very beginning. All of this is through you and by you. And I pray now that as we have our tithes and offering, that you will take the little that we are able to offer back, knowing that you will take that and do great things with it. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your ministry and to be able to reach out to our community to be a blessing. So please be with all aspects of our worship service today. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be prepared for your spirit to work within us. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Um, glad you can all worship with us um, on this Lord's Day. Uh, let us all stand uh, before we uh, sing. Um, before um, we uh, like to open up our worship uh, with a passage um, in Psalms uh, 148, 1 to 14. And it reads, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise the Lord in the heights, praise him and all his angels, praise him, all his hosts, praise him, sun and moon, praise him, all the uh, shining stars, praise him, your highest heavens and your waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. Uh, he gave a decree and uh, it saw it and not uh, pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. You shall great uh, sea creatures in all the depths, fi uh, fire and hail, s uh, snow and mist, the stormy winds, fulfilling the, his word, mountains and his hills, fruits and trees and all the cedars, beasts and all the livestock and creep creeping things and f uh, flying birds. King of all the earth and all the people, princes and the rulers of all the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above all earth and heaven. He has raised up a, a horn for his people. Praise for all this is his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. And... Um, this, this song really um, just exemplifies the, the song that we're about to sing, um, All Creatures of Our God and King.
joy to stay. Oh, praise Him. Hallelujah. Then who shall fall on their dead knees? Oh, creatures of our God and King. Oh, praise Him. Oh,
just as I am Empty handed but alive in your hands This next song we're about to sing is uh, somewhat new to um, our, our church. And so um, if you don't know this, yet, this song yet, just uh, focus on the lyrics and
God, thank you for this time that we can just worship you in, in your house, in your church. God, and I just want to pray for um, this message that Pastor Steve is about to um, preach on. Um, let it, um, may the words meditate on us and um, keep us uh, meditated on those words throughout the week. And um, yeah, and just keep us safe um, throughout the week. In Jesus' name, pray, amen. You all may be seated. Thank you, Brother Garrett and uh, worship team. And thank you. Um, last night, we, as, la yesterday rather, we had two outreach events, one by our Cantonese ministries called Amazing Grace. And it was uh, in MC1, they had about 400 people come and they shared the gospel through their music and song. And then we had, as, we, as you heard uh, earlier, we had Trunk or Treat and we've had this for three or four years now. Uh, you know, 2,000 people signed up. I don't know how many actually came, but it was a wonderful, safe, fun alternative for kids uh, versus Halloween. And um, again, I just want to thank all of you who participated, whether in the background or a trunk or whatever you did. Uh, thank you so much for that opportunity. And if you're here today because of the event, we welcome you to BACBC. And we hope that you, if you don't have a church home, that you could make this your church home and uh, through that information form, we'd be glad to, you know, pray for you, to, to learn more about you and see how we might meet some of your needs through Jesus. So, um, ushers, could you go ahead and start passing out um, uh, these jolly ranchers here? Okay, yeah, now, I don't like them, okay? But uh, even if you don't like them, take one, and you can take two, okay? Everybody, I, there's enough to you can take two, but take at least one, even if you don't like them, uh, because I want you to, I'm going to illustrate something that will help you this morning, okay? Uh, I don't know about you, but I, 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 I want more wisdom. I need more wisdom, right, as a leader, as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, and, and I think you all know Proverbs is written so that we might gain wisdom, Wisdom, God's wisdom, right? Because of our relationship with God. But how to live life as he would want us to daily by his guidance. And, and maybe, like, maybe like myself, there, were, there, was a, there have been seasons where, you know, a, a, a chapter of Proverbs a day, right? Because there's 31 chapters, so you could finish off Proverbs in one month and you just repeat that. And I've done that, and perhaps some of you have done that to try to gain some of this wisdom. But let me ask you, how many of you, how many Proverbs can you quote besides Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and maybe a few others that you really have internalized that wisdom? Well, I'm going to give you um, two, two ways so that you might, that Proverbs may not just be a book you read one chapter a month, or, oh, I know there's all this wisdom in here, but I can't remember any of it, or I'm not sure if I'm living any of it, how you can make this part of your daily life, because I think that's all of us want to do that, and all of us need this kind of wisdom. And so there's a devotional book that, you know, he's one of my favorite authors, Tim Keller, and he's written this devotional book. So if ever, for, he has 365 devotionals, one or two verses of Proverbs in each one of the devotionals, and he said this, Okay, he said this. That's why you have the Jolly Ranchers, the hard candy, okay? He said this about how to internalize a proverb. A proverb is like hard candy. It's like a Jolly Rancher. If you bite down on it so nobody bite down on you, can, you can eat it, okay? Don't tell Kenneth, but you can have your Jolly Rancher this morning, okay? If, <laughs> if you bite down on it, you get a little out of it. You may even get a broken tooth. So don't bite on your Jolly Rancher. Instead, you must meditate on it until the sweetness of insight comes. So please, I welcome you to, so that this will stick in your brain, right? To have a Jolly Rancher as I'm speaking. And this is one way which you can take each proverb, to treat each proverb as a Jolly Rancher, right? Just don't glance through it, uh, fast uh, speed read through the chapter, and then I did... I, I check off my box, but instead savor it. Each one, one per day. And you might want to get Keller's uh, devotional to help you get started on that. Okay, so here's, here's another way to have the Proverbs wisdom become part of us, right? Now, that's what God wants, and that's what we need, 
right? Another is to, to treat the book of Proverbs like a puzzle. Now, this is a 500-piece puzzle, and, um, and, and my oldest grandson, Christopher, he turned seven yesterday. He likes to do puzzles. And there's a donut puzzle that Esther and I, mainly Esther, did with him <laughs> a while back. And we try to tr tr give him some strategy. You know, f for us, we like doing the f do the frame first, you know. And then, and then look for the donuts. Look for the donuts of the same, the pieces of the same color because that helps you organize. You know that's going to be that part of the puzzle, right? And Proverbs is, when you read through the chapters, it's like these, uh, a scattered array of very short, phrases of wisdom, and they seem kind of disconnected sometimes, right? And so a strategy for getting the most out of Proverbs is, well, you know the frame is wisdom, but you gather all the verses about whatever it might be, right? There's so many themes in there, and, and Keller does a great job. Um, Derek Kidner's commentary does a great job on this. Like some of the, some of the topics are wisdom itself, foolishness. Um, sex, money, power, justice, and today we're going to look at words. So gather all the, you know, gather, and the, the computer can help you do this nowadays pretty easily. Gather all the proverbs about money, just like you'd gather all the pieces of the yellow donut. Put them together. Look at all of them because the proverbs alone don't, a proverb does not stand alone by itself. The other ones help you figure out the limitations or the expansion of that piece of wisdom that God wants you, okay, he wants you to integrate into your life. And so um, that's what we're going to do today. And we're not going to be able to do it justice. And because of Pastor Johnny's and Luisa's retirement celebration, that's why I'm wearing a tie right, this morning. And we got, we have to end early, right? We have to end early. And I hope all of you could stay for the program part at least, because uh, it's been a great joy and honor to serve with him for these 31 years. Actually, it's been longer because we knew each other as lay leaders in the church. We served on the church council together. Uh, we, we ser he served in Cantonese uh, clubs, and, I, and Esther and I, and he and Louisa in Cantonese fellowships, and Esther and I in uh, the English fellowships. But we've served together for a long time, and God has used him in a wonderful way, and we want to just celebrate their time with us afterwards. All right, so um, we're going to talk, we're going to collect, I've collected in your message guide all the, ver not all, most of the verses I could find on Proverbs about words, and I've tried to group them, and so if you want that, save you some work, you know, if, or if you want the soft copy, I can send that to you too, uh, but I think um, it would be, it would be very powerful for, our, for our, our lives, even though we may know some of these Proverbs to look at them collectively and, um, and to gain that wisdom God wants us to have. So that the Proverbs, again, get internalized and transform us into the likeness of Christ in our speech. So today, we're going to look at the power of words. So let's, let's have a word of prayer first, okay? God, thank you for the uh, wonderful time of worship and song today. And we're reminded that... Um, because of your love for us, that we can be your children, because of your, your gracious God and King. And I just pray that, thank you, Lord, for uh, giving us the Proverbs so that we may know how to navigate uh, this life. And so you've not left us alone. You've given us, again, your word. You've given us your Holy Spirit. I just pray today as we speak about the power of words that uh, even though it may be a reminder, some of these may be reminders to us that you would, you would um, help us to live this out in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we're going to speak out the power of words, various Proverbs in, uh, that we're going to look at this morning. Okay. So we're going to treat this like a jolly rancher. We're going to spend a little bit of time here on this proverb. Perhaps you've read this, this but I've never kind of reflected on it like recent, time, recent days. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Most of the Proverbs at least have 
and sometimes it's more than one proverb, will have one phrase, right? And then the next phrase will expand, clarify, limit. It, it, does, it works, it interplays with the first verse. And that's very important to understand because this is Hebrew poetry. And to get the most out of it, we've got to understand how it's designed. It's also designed with vivid imagery, right? Vivid imagery. And it, the author intentionally, it's like, kind of like a beautiful painting uh, that he wants you to stop he wants you to think and meditate and reflect and think of how all the implications of those images apply to the piece of wisdom he's trying to give to you. He doesn't want you to gloss over it as a checkbox. I read this chapter today, right? And so Proverbs are meant for us in order to, to internalize this wisdom, to stop, to meditate like a jolly rancher, right? Right? So it can, it can come into our hearts. And so like in this verse, right, think of the imagery of death. I officiated a funeral last week, and I saw the sadness of the family, the grief they experienced, the pain they experienced over this, because their mom died from a fourth round of cancer. So, so, we, so just don't glance over these words. Think about death. We think about the war in between Hamas and Israel, the war between Ukrainians and Russians, and the thousands and hundreds of people who are being wounded and dying. We shouldn't be callous to that. Think of life. When you think of the word life, what do you think of? I think of uh, Pastor Rand told us rec in recent days there are three new babies in the Mandarin congregation. When I think of life, I think of one of our uh, friends who are here today, Mom came to receive Jesus as personal Savior through Pastor Johnny's witness to her. New life in Christ, a new birth, great joy. Think of the word power. Power. Think of the word tongue, right? The tongue, well, obviously he's not talking, again, it's, it's poetry, right? It's not the physical piece of the organ in your mouth. But it's the brain that has the thoughts that somehow, ma not magically, but amazingly moves our tongue to create words to express those thoughts. And there's power in those thoughts because this verse about death and life and the power of the tongue tells us how words have power to hurt or help somebody else. In other words, it goes beyond yourself. Your words have the power cause destruction and harm and pain or bring life, encouragement, and blessing to another. That's the power of words. Now, um, and so, and first point as we kind of savor this Jolly Rancher proverb here is that there, there's a phrase one, death and life are in the power of the tongue, Phrase two adds more to phrase one. They're not disconnected. And those who love it will eat its fruit, will eat its fruit. So, so how does that second phrase, as we meditate upon this passage, what's the relationship there? Well, the first phrase, as I mentioned, talks about how our words, right, can affect somebody else, good or bad. The second phrase talks about, and those who love it, again, a vivid word, those who love it, those who constantly practice what, either speaking words of death or speaking words of life, how people who love this, who practice this regularly, will eat its fruits. Now, kind of intuitively, we go, oh, I think I know what that means. What does that mean? How about thinking deeply about that? How about meditating and reflecting on it? Because I found when I did, this, this has really sobered me up on my words. I know words are important, but reflecting and meditating and take your time in it, chewing on it, has really, again, just made me aware of the power of, of words, both blessing and cursing to other people. And so the second phrase says, okay, so this, you... Whoever loves, whoever practices speaking words of death or those who 
we speak words, uh, regularly practice words of life, it's like you're, you're a tree, you produce fruit. And that is kind of weird, right? But you eat that fruit that you produce. In other words, what comes around goes around. What you practice and give to others, whether it's good or bad, you too will experience that. So that's pretty sobering. That's pretty sobering that, that again, the, the, the Lord, it's like you sow what you reap. You reap what you sow, excuse me, you reap what you sow for yourself. And so this proverb reminds us that um, it's a warning, right? It's a warning. You practice this words that hurt other people, and guess what? It's going to come back. You're going to get hurt yourself. If you, on the other hand, it's an encouragement. Let's, let us speak regularly words of encouragement and blessing because when you do, God will bless you and bring you life also. All right. So, and so that that's just a, a simple way in which you can do this with every proverb you, can, you come across. And again, it's regarding words and speech. There's enough, if you get the message guide, there's enough verses there for at least a month of in-depth devotionals about where God can, can um, impart wisdom into our lives about our speech. Keller also has um, a couple of questions that I think would help you as you, you ha uh, have meditate and reflect on a proverb uh, Proverbs, you know, to ask yourself again, the key is the Bible is not, as Dwight L. Moody said, the Bible is not for our information, but it's for our transformation. It's for our transformation. And so two questions you can ask yourself is, uh, one is where in your life or the life of someone else have you seen this observation illustrated? Right? And then second, how can you put this observation into practice in thought, attitude, word, or deed. And he suggests that you do it as a group and you discuss it with a, a brother or sister in Christ. Uh, and that's, again, I think that's really key to understanding Scripture is, is, is not only your personal time, but discussing it with somebody else. Okay, so, so we got the general idea. You know, our words can bring um, death or they can bring life. But what, what does that mean? Let's go a little bit deeper. Again, as we kind of choose one of the donuts in the puzzle, right? Get all the, those of the same color together to help us give a, f to give a fuller understanding of this idea of speech in the book of Proverbs. Okay, so uh, Proverbs 12, verse 18, helps us understand the power of words, the power of death in words, how they can cut the heart and the spirit. And this proverb says this. Again, two phrases to it, right? There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, poetry, image, vivid imagery, meant to cause us to stop, to reflect and think about. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So here's, we see a contrast, right? First phrase about someone who is foolish. And the second phrase is about someone who is wise with their words. Obviously, we want to be wise with our words. And so uh, rash means um, thoughtless, hasty, impulsive, um, words off the top of our heads. And some of us, that's not a problem. Like, you know, my personality is, actually, I don't like talking. I'd rather listen than talk. But some of you would rather talk than listen, right? And, this is, and so some of us will struggle more than others with um, this idea of not speaking hastily, impulsively, off the top of our head, especially when we are emotionally hot and angry. We find even this happens to the best of us. In fact, there's a, in, in Psalm 106, Moses is, it talks about Moses, how he got frustrated. And we've all been frustrated. We've been, he was frustrated by the murmuring and complaining 
of the people he was leading. Notice what it says in Psalm 106, verse 32 and 33. They, ang they angered him at the waters of Marburah, and it went ill with Moses on their account, for they made his spirit bitter. They made his spirit bitter, and he spoke rashly. He spoke impulsively. He spoke hastily. He spoke when he was hot and angry with his lips. In other words, he spoke words that I'm sure he regret he, 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 he spoke. He spoke words that didn't please God. He spoke words that hurt the people. It happens even to the best of us. But we are warned here that when we speak words like those kind of words, rash words, they are like sword thrusts. So the sword in their day was a lethal weapon, as it is today. You might substitute it for a gun today, right? And the intent of a sword is to do what? Of course, it's to kill the other person. It's a lethal weapon. But the idea is to pierce deeply into the body of the other person to, and cut him and harm his organs so that they will die. And again, this picture that the uh, author of Proverbs, might have been Solomon on, on this one, is that when we speak words out of emotional anger or we don't, with our thoughtless words, they can. They can pierce the spirit. They can pierce the heart of another person and wound them. with perhaps a pain that will last for them the rest of their lives, right? Another Proverbs 15.4 says a similar thing about, again, the this, this speech, how it can, it can uh, hurt the heart and the spirit of a person. Proverbs 15.4 says, and we may get to this later, a gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in, in the tongue, in, this, in our speech, it breaks, it fractures the spirit. So one of the ways that um, the power of words can cause death and harm is that it can, be like a, it can be like a sword that causes significant damage to the inner person of another person. So we know that it is a lie, that, that, that little ditty we've been taught as kids, sticks and stones, may break my bones, but words will never harm me. No, words can do great damage. And the, proverb, the, the wisdom we gain is don't speak out of haste. Don't speak when you emotionally are upset, right, like Moses did. Uh, but instead, hold back. And we need God's power and Holy Spirit to help us in those times. All right. And so when I speak of words, of course, I... I obviously do mean speak about our words verbally, but it could be texting. It could be, uh, you know, words through social media. All these things, all these things can uh, uh, cause these kinds of pains. Uh, words can uh, penetrate and cut to the heart and soul of a person. They can cause spiritual, emotional, and psychological damage. The words of Especially it, it happens, can happen when someone's in authority and, you, and they speak those words to you and you're under them, whether it's, you know, like a teacher or a coach or a, your boss or your dad or your mom or your grandpa or your grandma, uh, your aunt, a pastor, a spiritual leader. They say something to us and what causes even greater damage is if they say things like, you're stupid, you're an idiot, you're a loser. Why can't you be like this other person? You'll never amount to anything, and you believe it. And you've believed a lie. But that can affect a person for their whole life unless they get freed from that, right? I mean, um, an example would be sad to say, you know, we're, we're taking steps to, we, unfortunately, in ministry nowadays, we have to think about things like active shooters in a school in particular. We have to prepare for that. But, you know, some of these active shooters, you know why they did their thing? You know how it started? Because they were bullied. They received words that cut deep into their spirit and heart. No one loved on them. Sure, they have responsibility. 
Sure, they have responsibility. But someone cut to their spirit and cut to their heart with words, the words of death to them. And so, um, it's okay. So, words carry the power of death. They can cut to the heart and to the spirit. What, ha what should we do? What should we do? Again, this is part of the meditation. This is part of those two questions that would help us get this wisdom. What, what, what should we do, right? If we have spoken those kinds of words, well, you know what we should do. We should do CPR. We should do first confession. Then receive pardon from the Lord. Then receive, re receive restoration. We should seek God and ask his forgiveness for sp speaking those kinds of words. Repent of that. Then we should ask forgiveness Again, if it's appropriate, you have to evaluate the situation from those we have spoken those words to. That's part of growth. That's part of maturing as a Christian. Confession of our sin. F asking forgiveness and confessing to the other we have offended. If you have received these kind of words, spiritual warfare is called you've been cursed. Not a voodoo curse, though those exist too. But someone in authority has placed a curse upon you. You need to renounce that curse and break that curse in the name of Jesus by the power of Jesus that has no power over you any longer. Forgive the person who has cursed you. There is freedom in this, in Jesus' name. All right. Um, okay, so let's go on. And I'm not sure how far I'm going to get today because I have to end, on, end early today. All right. The power of death, why, why, is it, why is it so damaging? Because they can spread their damage. A worthless man, a troublemaker, plots evil. Fra phrase one. Phrase two, how does he do that? And his speech, his words is like a scorching fire. His words are like a scorching fire. Fire. We all know, we can, we can picture that. Again, you stop, we can picture that because we live in Northern California. We live in the Northwest United States where for many years now, whether intentional or uh, unintentional, fires have been, these, these crazy fires have started that wiped out acres and thousands, tens of thousands of acres of land, wiped out whole cities, right, like paradise, not too far from here, who some of you have gone there to do relief work in Paradise, California. Just a little spark uh, spreads and creates a, a terrible destruction. James said, says it in James chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue, your words, have power because is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. Uh, Keller has a, a, a devotional on this verse. It's called Words Spread. Words Spread. I like what he said. He said, long before the Internet, words had a remarkable power to go viral. Technology now enables false rumors and fake news to spread instantly. False reports or even true but unkindly meant words have always had the power to spread like a scorching fire to ruin reputations and alienate people from one another. Words that we say to others unintentionally or intentionally to hurt some others can spread very easily and have its power multiplied. Now, I'm going to share with you an illustration, not because actually I, I don't feel it's like a scorching fire. I don't even see it as, I think it's just an innocent mistake, but I want to share, share with you the power of how words can spread so easily. That's why we need to have wisdom in when we share our words and who we share our words to. So it was last Saturday, and I, I have a Facebook account, but I really don't look at it. I did receive a message from a friend. A friend, he's in my class, but we haven't talked, we haven't spoken years, but he said, Steve, I heard that you had a stroke. And I just wanted to let you know I'm praying for you in your recovery and for your wife. You go, oh, wait a minute. I, last thing I know, I haven't had a stroke. In fact, I ran three times last week, and I went swimming, 
And, uh, and so I said to my friend, hey, and he said, I heard this from other people. And, and, and I said, that's okay. Jim, I'm, 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 I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. In fact, let's, let's talk about, he said, no, let's talk about it. I said, sure. We haven't got together to connect yet, but um, we still plan, plan to do that. But then later on, I heard it got expanded. <laughs> the story got embellished that not only did I have a stroke, but my cancer came back and it metastasized into my bone. And I go, man, where did, this, where did this come from? And so I don't know. But actually, it didn't bother me because I know I'm okay, right? I didn't have a stroke and cancer didn't come back. Um, a few rounds of gout, but that's, that's okay. Uh, but it just shows the power how words can spread. Again, I don't attribute anything evil or anything malicious about it. Just some, something went awry somewhere. But it's amazing how the wor your words can spread, especially through social media and the electronic digital means we have today. And so it just reminds me, again, the wisdom is from this proverb, how good words or good words we want to spread, bad words we don't want to spread, right? And uh, anyway, let's move on. All right, so they can spread. Third is that they can divide. They can divide. Now, this pro this, again, here's a proverb of multiverses. It speaks of the power of words because three out of the six abominations uh, are about words. And God says, I hate these kind of words. Now, if words didn't have any power or any impact, God would just kind of, you know, don't worry about it. I'm not going to mention it. Just get over it, <laughs> you know. But notice three out of the six things that God hates have to do with words. Now, there are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are an abomination to him. Pride, haughty eyes. A lying tongue, one of them. Someone who doesn't tell the truth. And hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that make haste to run to evil. A f second one, a false witness who breathes out lies. Lies, again, whether you heard them from an authority figure that you believe, lies that are told about you, lies that testify against you, God hates those things. And then the one who sows discord, division among brothers, among the family. And so I, a piece of wisdom for us, again, on the warning side is do not speak words that are divisive. You need, to weigh, you need to take that very seriously, brothers and sisters, because this is what God says. He hates that. Even if it's off the cuff, even if you don't mean it intentionally, you know, we need to be, make sure our words are not divisive to your own family and to the church family. It's very important to God. It's very important to Jesus that John 17 and John 13 are, are live, practiced among us to build unity, not division, all right? So, because words can divide, because words have power. All right, just a couple more. Go back to the first verse that we were, we were um, treating like a jolly rancher, right? So we've looked at the death side as, as we, we kind of put this puzzle together, gathered some verses on the death side, the destruction side of words. But now let's look on the life side because there's the positive to this. The li death and life are in the power of the tongue. And remember, so your, our, our words have the power to hurt or help somebody else, but they also have the power to help and hurt us, our own selves, right? And those who love it will eat its fruits. Those who love it will eat its fruits. All right. Two verses, one we already looked at. There's one whose rash words are like sword thrusts. That's the foolish one, one who speaks foolish words. Here's the wise, the one who speaks wisely. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. The tongue of the wise uh, brings healing. In other words, our words can also be healing words. 
Well, what kind of words are healing words? Well, it's going to be the opposite of rash words. It's going to be thoughtful words, right? Because we look at the two, two phrases, they play off one another. Thoughtful words can bring healings to people who have been wounded. Thoughtful words, prayerful words, words um, implanted by the Holy Spirit in our minds, right? They can bring healing to a person's spirit and to their heart that has been wounded by harmful words and destructive words. God's word, bring God's word to a, a brother or a sister or a friend or a relative who's, who has received, right? Destructive words can bring healing. Words like God loves you, God forgives you. God accepts you as you are. You are made in the image of God. You have infinite value and worth. Truthful words can bring healing, right? Because if we've believed lies, but we can replace them with truth, then we're set free from those lies, and that truth can set us free. The truth can set us free, right? We need to recognize it is a lie that time heals all things. Time does not heal all things because if people have been cursed, if people have been wounded, that wound will stay there until there are some words of healing, not time of healing, words of healing brought to them. May we be people of wisdom. May we sense as we interact with people in our fellowships, in our small groups, in our church family, in your own family, that we sense where there's a hurt and there's a wound there's a reason people act the way they do. Wounded people hurt people. Hurting people hurt people, right? That is a true statement. So find that hurt and give them words, right? Give them words, give them prayers, give them love of healing because our words have that power. Our words have that power. Then secondly, a gentle tongue is a tree of life. Again, here, again if you could just, we're not going to be able to sit on this one like I'd, I'd like us to, right? A gentle tongue comforting, calm tongue, not one is speaking out of rashness, not speaking hastily, not thoughtlessly, not out of emotional heat, but in gentleness, calmness. Words is a tree of life. Again, the, the author intentionally wanted us to stop on this tree of life. Well, the, where, where do we, what do we find about the tree of life? We find, it says in Proverbs 3.18, Wisdom is a tree of life. We want to get wisdom. To those who lay hold of her, those who hold fast, hold her fast are called blessed. This tree of life is God's wisdom. God's wisdom can be a tree of life to somebody. We find that um, tree, the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. Eat of that tree and you have eternal life. The tree of life here is, 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 can also be the picture of good fruit nutritious fruit, f producing food that we need to survive. And it can be reminding us that words of wisdom are these thoughtful words, right? These thoughtful words that give nourishment to a person's soul and heart. That's what a wise person does. That's what a wise person posts on social media. That's what a wise person does. When they're angry, they stop until God can get them under control. Then they are thoughtful about words not to hurt, but how to bless. Gentle words are words where our tone, our volume, our selection of words make a difference, and we recognize that. Did I put that one down? No. Okay, so they can heal a wounded spirit. There's much you can think and pray and meditate about that. Okay, so I'm going to close with this one. How can I speak with wisdom? Listen. We're kind of going through the, our staff here. We're, we're going through this uh, one, one aspect of the training that I think is really important. We'll improve all of our leadership. It's called active listening. And, and there's a subtitle, How to Improve in Your Leadership of Others. L listening is the first step of first action of love, leader, uh, act of listen, listening is the first step of great leadership. 
And um, if one gives an answer, be, and notice the foolishness of one who doesn't listen. If one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly, it is his folly and shame. It is his folly and shame. And so um, a foolish person interrupts other people before they're done talking. A foolish person uh, makes an assumption. They know exactly what the other person's thinking, so they don't have to really hear them out. A foolish person uh, commits a suicide. They make assumptions instead of trying to understand the other person's perspective. It is foolish. It is folly and shame to answer a person before you have heard them. Some of us have a bad habit of that. We interrupt people. We make assumptions. We think we, 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 think we know what they're, what they're really thinking, but we haven't really <coughs> dived deep enough to understand where they're coming from. I'm guilty of that. I've done this many times, but I'm growing in this, and I realize how powerful it is to be a great listener, okay, to be a listener. How can I speak with wisdom? First of all, be quiet and learn to listen with all of your heart to the other person. Um, Okay. Let's stand at this time, and I'm going to ask the worship team to come up and lead us in a closing prayer, and we're going to speak maybe on this next, next week.
Christ would offer his only Son. Who else invites me to call him Father? Holy, a holy God. Holy, my holy God. Come on, come on. pastors who are available if you'd like to have a prayer um, again we have pastor Johnny and Luis's uh, retirement celebration program coming up at 1240 1245 so be aware of that but let's uh, have a prayer our father in heaven we thank you that you have given us the book of Proverbs as wisdom to live out in daily life your will and I just pray that we could learn to enjoy we can learn to reflect and meditate upon each of the Proverbs and collectively around certain themes so we may gain this wisdom in our lives. As we go into this new week, be with every, every, every person who is here. Go before them. Draw them close to yourself. Protect them from the evil one. And Lord, uh, use them in a mighty way for your glory. Thank you for this morning. We can worship you now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, blessings to you all.